we have a golden opportunity to provide quality education to all South African students. But if we do not take this opportunity right here, right now, we significantly hinder our students' capability to compete within the global labor market. See, we stand at the very beginning of an educational revolution with the increased adoption of artificial intelligence that may change the way we learn forever. Now, this is a picture of me back in high school. This was the slow learners class. It was normal for there to be a 30% average in this classroom. In fact, when I got 14% in maths, I considered myself very lucky. And if you managed to get 45% in this class, they hailed you as Einstein. Even my teachers thought that we'll do poorly, as I distinctly remember one teacher saying the sole purpose of my class was to extract school fees in order to help pay for gardeners and cover other operational costs. And she wasn't lying because I failed, out, failed through most of my high school. Six months before my final high school exam with a failed mid-year report card, I overhear my mom and my eldest brother speaking. My mom, worrying about my future, rightfully so, gets stopped in her tracks by my brother with the most reassuring voice saying, have faith, be calm, James will pass. This is me now. Today I stand in front of you as a PhD candidate in one of the highest ranking universities in Africa, carrying out groundbreaking research in how artificial intelligence and robotics impacts the labor market. Till date, I've won multiple international merit awards and scholarships, even today. Now, I know what you're thinking. How is this possible? How does a failing slow learner become a doctor, a 14% earner become a PhD? Today, I shall share with you the three things that propelled me to become the man I am today and how AI can make that possible for each and every single student. Now, this talk is relevant in today's time because there's plenty of evidence that South Africa's education system is broken and leaves plenty of students behind for multiple reasons. I mean, the first crisis is we have a severe teacher shortage crisis, with the national teacher ratio average being one teacher to 30 students. But if you go to Eastern Cape, you'll see one teacher to 50 students, but just scholars say the ideal teacher ratio is about 10 to 15 students per single teacher. So there's a problem. The second issue is South Africa has one of the most unequal education systems globally, with well-resourced schools providing quality education, unlike non-well-resourced schools. In fact, Amnesty International public that the top 200 schools had more math distinctions than the following 6,600 schools combined. That's a big issue. <laughs> the third issue we should take heed of is that we have an alarming dropout rate in this country, with three out of 10 pupils age of 18 dropping out of school in 2021 citing that one of the reasons that pushed them to do it is poor academic performance like me, like what we earned in the slow learners class. See, if we do not rectify these issues, we trap our students into a cycle of missed opportunities, into low-income jobs, experiencing high unemployment, and even worse, imprisonment. I believe AI can help us break this cycle. The first thing that propelled me to become the person I am today is after I overheard my mom and my brother speaking, I made a commitment to myself that I'm going to start learning at my own pace. My brother would have individual sessions with me, picking up my strengths and weaknesses to optimize study sessions. Now, I'm not encouraging this at all, but I'll take weeks off school, sometimes months, to, to stay in my own room and to have personalized learning. And you can see how this is different, because a single teacher is burdened with the responsibility to give attention to a diverse group of students which will leave slow learners like me behind. So how can this help with South Africa? I believe AI tutor assistants can help, with computer-based systems that can extract data from each and every single individual student, even creating their own personalized tests and exercises to propel their academic ability. We all know that students in the public sector cannot afford private tutors, unlike students in the private sector, and this perpetuates inequalities within the educational system. Now, if that's not convincing enough for you, we can look at the case study in Dan Fitzpatrick's book, where he highlights a worrying father with a failing maths or a daughter who's struggling in maths. 
and he trains an AI to teach the daughter even the tone the AI should teach the daughter in, and the daughter goes from a struggling math student to an award-winning math student. This will solve the teacher shortage crisis. With AI tutor systems in China called Lila Shao, that can teach up to 600,000 teachers at the price point of one single teacher. In Tanzania, the startups understand that their students don't have access to internet and textbooks. So they use AI tutor systems alongside with SMS technology to provide quality education to the student's phone, creating innovative solutions for local problems. Now, the second thing that propelled me to become the person I am today was as my brother was having individual sessions with me, he used that information to make him a better teacher for me. And it's probably the time where I should highlight that I don't think AI is going to replace teachers, but change their roles within the education system and enhance their teaching efforts. So for example, I'm a third year tutor. And after I create a bomb tutorial, I upload it into AI and I ask it, how can I make this tutorial more interactive, more creative? And we team up with my knowledge, skills, and expertise together with the AI. And the next day when I meet in front of my class, I deliver an impactful, valuable tutorial that my students are grateful for, and it even trickles down to their grades. In the same way AI has advanced doctors in the medical sector and not replaced them, is in the same way I believe that will be true for the educational sector. Now, the last thing that propelled me to be the person I am today, and the most important thing, actually, is overhearing my brother tell my mom that James will pass despite my failing academic track record. See, it was in that powerful experience that a well-studied phenomenon in the psychological field called the Pygmalion effect took place. And the Pygmalion effect is how an individual's expectations while communicated can change another individual's values, beliefs, and even behaviors. See, there's plenty of evidence and studies that show that teachers' expectations while communicated in acting the Pygmalion effect even improve student performance. Now, we cannot just train teachers in South Africa about the Pygmalion effect, but the universal implementation of that still remains a challenge. I believe we can code AI to inherently have the Pygmalion effect within it to effectively communicate high standards to each and every single student, fostering a culture of academic and excellence. We have seen the digitalization of the Pygmalion effect with OkCupid. Now, for those who are not familiar, OkCupid is a dating platform where it matches two individuals and ranks their compatibility with an algorithm. And they thought to themselves, why not do an experiment and tell the algorithm to tell people who are poorly matched that they are actually made for each other? And to their surprise, their conversa the conversations of the people who were poorly matched started going deeper and longer, as if the belief of compatibility was more important than compatibility itself. I think we can transfer that principle into AI. Changing the trajectory for students who are told, like me, that we're only good for school fees, to being told that you are excellent and you can achieve whatever you set your mind to, like my brother did for me. Now, unfortunately, I get to the scary part of my talk. Other countries like China, UAE, are aggressively adopting AI into their educational sector, preparing their students with the skills for the world of future work, which is technologically savvy. And South Africa is being left behind. We have to act now. We can do this by taking inspiration from the University of Johannesburg, that announced that it's going to put AI courses across all of its qualifications. We can take heed to Professor Ethan Molitik that forces all his students to use ChatGPT for his module instead of running away from it. We can train our teachers about AI to make them competent in expanding their teaching efforts within their classrooms. And we can build a bridge between private tech, ed tech companies and South African high schools to provide innovative problems specifically for our local context and not just being re re receivers of AI solutions from the global north. I was so lucky to have a brother that could take me from 14% to a PhD. I'm really hoping AI could be your brother.